Okay, synergy. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right. So um, I'll kick us off. All right, you ready? Yep. Are you? <laughs> yeah, I said yeah. <laughs> right, hold on, hold on. Oh, fuck, are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 by the sounds Not of it. Not at all. <laughs> 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 all right, here we go. Good evening, dear listeners, and welcome to another episode of the podcast where we, the uh, people at Ghastly Tales, talk over different horror subjects. Subjects? Yeah, that's right. You say another, I... but I mean, it's been about, what, seven years since the last one? I know, I know, but I have to, I, I have to, like, I have to qualify it. I have to be like, remember when we did these? These other ones, yeah, those other two, those bi- the biannual podcast yeah exactly I think uh, we haven't done one for it what was the last one actually it was last year um, or was it last year or did we do one this year oh we, no we did uh, I think the last one was Halloween mate really my yeah. god well that's that's not good well we keep saying this we are going to try and do more of these um, I should say and I'm Mike and you are and whatever you want me to be you're Callum okay. uh, and we are two of the people on this channel <laughs> two people what are ghastly tales <laughs> yeah yeah so um the other week i noticed that it was the the 60th anniversary of uh the horror of dracula was it the no no, no it wasn't the horror of dracula it was the 60th anniversary of I need to start this again, Cam. I've just realised. I've just. <laughs> I've just realised that I'm fucked. I'm fucked up easily, right? Right. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> I'm now. I'm now doubting myself. Hello, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> I'm now doubting myself. Uh, yeah. Do you know what happened there? Mm. You can keep this in if you want, right? I forgot what, what year it was. Well, what year did you think it was? For a second Martin there, McFly. I started thinking it was 2016, and I, I have in front of me a list of Hammer horror films. Right. And I'm, I was thinking, oh, it was the 60th anniversary of uh, the first Hammer horror movie. Okay. But then I'm sitting thinking, because Hammer horror look, originally started in like the 30s, didn't it? Yeah. And then it kind of. Uh, yeah, we'll, had a we'll, resurgence in the fifties, and then yeah, uh, we'll, we'll Daniel get, Radcliffe we'll, came back to play uh, some guy's dad, but you were just yeah. like, nah. Yeah, that that's exactly <laughs> what nah. happened. Um, yeah, so I was looking at this list of films, and I was looking at uh, some of the other ones, but because the thing is, Hammer Horror as a film studio, they're legendary in the the horror genre. I love them. You love them, Calm. It's sixty years since uh, The Curse of Frankenstein came out right. and we thought we would have a little chat about it. But the interesting thing about uh, the, the Curse of Frankenstein is that it's not it's not really their very first horror film. There are actually, there's the Quatermass films uh, before that. And I also wanted to check if the, have you seen The Abominable Snowman? Uh, I haven't actually. But yeah. I've seen Horror Express, so I mean, is that not kind of the same thing? <laughs> no, no, it's not. See the same if we thing, could yeah. just do a podcast on Horror Express, I'd do it. Oh, I know I'd... it's not a Hammer film, but I think that's one of the films that people have got a, a preconception that it actually is a Hammer film because yeah, well, of the stars in it. You know, like yeah. you've got regular Hammer veterans like Peter Cushing, Cushing, um, Christopher Lee, Telly Savalas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very briefly. Um, that's one of those films though where p- people are like top build and then it's like, they're in it for like they're in it for like two seconds yeah but anyway so um, Hammer Horror as Callum said did start off doing sort of B-movie like sort of crime films and romance films comedy films so they did, they had actually been around for a couple of decades before we get into the 1950s did one of their first films not have Big Bella Lugosi in it? Um, fucking pull that, the string himself not that I'm aware of uh, hang on, Hammer Productions, nineteen thirty-five, the mystery of the Marie Celeste, starring Bill Lugosi. Oh, all right, nice, nice. I did released not know in that. the USA as Phantom Ship. That's a better. Not name. to be uh, confused with that one which starred Billy Zane. Yeah, do you know what's really funny? I am sitting here with a book that I was given on Hammer Horror. Right, it's called the Hammer Story. 
uh, and it's not MC Hammer. <laughs> that would be hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> the Hammer story, the authorised history of Hammer films by Marcus Hearn and Alan Barnes with a foreword by Christopher Lee. And it's a, it's a great book. But here's the funny thing. See the page I'm sitting at right now? Mm. It's the start of, this. it says the exclusive years. It's the beginning of the, the Hammer horror uh, productions. And right in front of me, you've been saying that to me, and I'm like, no, I don't, I don't think so. Right in front of me, there is a picture of Bela Lugosi <laughs> dressed as like what looks like a sea captain. Right. So, um, but I mean, Bela like, Lugosi, he was always strung out. He was probably doing it as an extra job to make a bit of money. How were you to know it was a film? Oh, he was, he, he was. Incredible. He was bringing the drugs in. <laughs> but my, but my, uh, my personal um, relationship with Hammer Horror is that. I always love cosy horror, this idea that you can have something that's not overly disturbing, but it's just interesting and entertaining. And when I was a kid, that's what Hammer Horror was for me. And especially with Peter Cushing and uh, and Christopher Lee. And of course, as a, as a young boy, I always referred to Peter Cushing as Peter Cushing. Um, yeah, that's which, why I was making a joke of that earlier. I think uh, it slipped under the radar. Oh, I, probably my radar's uh, off right now. So you uh, wouldn't have stopped the the uh, <laughs> Luftwaffe. Yeah. So my I always loved it, but you, but I always loved the Dracula films. Those were the ones that I was sort of gravitated towards the most, especially that first one, the the horror of Dracula, which was in nineteen fifty eight. That came. Uh, a year after the curse of Frankenstein, which many people see as like the first Hammer horror uh, film, uh, it certainly was the first one in uh, Technicolor. Um, but like, it was really the horror of Dracula that that's the one that that's always stayed with me. It's it's a really great Dracula movie, but still a bastardi- bastardization of the actual book. The Universals. Uh, yeah, well, that, that's the funny thing as well because that's Hammer, what a lot of people like to kind of because I think a lot of people write but they Hammer are remakes, off. but they are yeah. remakes. They are they are they are technically remakes because as far as I remember, Universal were involved with uh, with Hammer Horror and like agreeing to allow them to remake. And that's why Hammer Horror treaded the same the same sort of uh, sources because they did the Mummy, they did. The Frankenstein films, they did the Dracula films, they even did a, a sort of Wolfman film at one point. So they they really went through all of the the sort of universal properties. Although Plus, the stories the, are very the, different. Uh, at the risk of being slightly sacrilegious, I would probably say that Peter Cushing was a better Van Helsing, but never mind. Uh, yes, I, I think that is true. That is true. But I do. I mean, uh, the original. He wasn't jumping off any tables. No, fucking no. Peter Cushing got right in about those curtains. I'm trying to remember the name of that actor from the Universal the Universal films. I know, I think he was Scottish actually. Nobody cares. <laughs> they do care. That, no. The I I really enjoy the Universal horror films. I think they've got a really sort of unique kind of. They 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 get more of the gothic uh, feel to me than the, but in a hokey way, obviously. Um, um, let me just find films. his name actually because we should really do him justice. Uh, Edward Van Sloan. I don't think he's Scottish, mate. <laughs> <laughs> he sounds like a fucking Nazi he infiltrator. He, he might be. Check his bio. A US character actor. He is of the close. He has he of the close cropped grey hair. What an interesting uh, description. No. All right. Okay. He's not from I, Scotland. I I'm, 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 I'm just. Stop just, just trying to things. repatriate everyone. <laughs> He's like you're like that guy from what was it? Goodness gracious me! Where they, they start talking about Jesus and they go, Ah yes, Jesus, a good Indian boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, no, okay, he's not <clears throat> Scottish, but uh, yeah. So it was the Dracula films I gravitated towards, and really, in a lot of ways, Peter Cushing as Van Helsing was the original sort of hero for me. That that uh, not in my life, <laughs> but in in films, he was the first character that you saw reappearing in a number of the films and sort of always fighting, fighting evil. You know, can you remember the first time you saw a Hammer horror film? Oh, um, it was probably one of the Frankenstein films, and right. it was probably one of the. I think it's maybe the third one. Is the third one? 
I've seen them all, but I think it may have been the the one where um, a Frankenstein takes on an assistant because he loses the use of his hands. Right. Uh, in a casino. Um, I'm trying to remember. Uh, yeah, this is, this is a really song. this is a really good discussion of Hammer horror films where we yeah. can't actually remember what films well, we're talking about. In fairness, I think it was very young because it's the kind of thing in the UK that was quite frequently run at like weird times on like bank holidays and stuff like that. Yeah, they got to the point where like certainly when I was a kid, in the beginning, like in the the sort of early to mid nineteen eighties. They were showing these films kind of late at night on like a Friday night and stuff like that. But yeah. then, like, even just five years later, I I'm sure I remember one of the 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 Hammer Dracula films being on like Channel Four like in the afternoon. Mm. Maybe it with j- some slight TV edits because Possibly. that's the thing. Compared to the the Universal stuff, they are they're much 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 more gory. Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, they, there's and that resty, famous in many cases. Yeah, yeah. There's there's that famous shot at the start of the horror of dracula where the blood drips down over over the the coffin and i and i think like that that was them trying to show what um color could do for a horror film because up until that point uh most ho- I, I don't know if it was it maybe the first color horror film i'm not sure um hmm. because horror films were normally b movies let's not say anything we can't take back well i've said it now cal Alright. Oh well, it's not. It's not. To be like fair, anyway. to be fair, I do remember an early version of the House of Wax, which has that really sort of strange. It it's not sort of color proper. It's like kind of tinted. Yeah, uh, I remember that. But, I mean, House of Wax was one where they were trying. Are you? I mean, when you say tinted, are you sure you weren't watching the three D version of House of no, Wax? No, like, I'm oh, talking. This is weird. It's all. I'm, I'm talking. <laughs> a, no, I'm talking about the version of House of Wax. Are you talking about the Vincent Price version? Yeah. I'm talking about the. I'm talking about the version that was like twenty years before that. Co- colorization is something that I've got a, a bit of a disdain for. Yeah, but I'm not sure if it was like the the print of that film that I saw. I'm not sure if it was uh, actually done after the fact or if it was some sort of strange colorization tech they were trying out at the time, if you know what I mean. Mm. I mean, it was on DVD, so so I don't really know. But anyway, back to Hammer. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, I think, like, Horror of Dracula is probably the first one I remember. Other ones that had a big effect on me, there's one called The Abominable Snowman, which I mentioned earlier, which was a year before... Um, the first Dracula film, and it's, it's possibly very, one of the few that I haven't actually seen. It's it's a, it's black and white. Peter Cushing. It's about an ex expedition into the Himalayas, and it's really tense, really atmospheric, character driven. Because obviously they didn't have the budget to really shoot up mountains properly. You know that's the thing. One of the the lovely things about Hammer as well is that they kind of had this estate that they shot on, so like, they kind of like just like constantly reused it yeah. for the films. Um, but th- but this I, I think most, if I remember rightly, most of the Abominable Snowman's, like it's it's basically interiors. But it's there's a lot of reuse as well. I think there's um there was a hotel that they used I think for the original Frankenstein's mm. uh, that they eventually used for Rocky Horror. Um, yeah. And now it's like I think it's now like a, a four star hotel or something. Nice. Just you can Tim go and Curry actually stay up? there. Uh, uh, you wouldn't want Tim Curry going. Oh, Callum! It's too Callum, haunting. Callum, it's too haunting. Callum, that is a horrific thing to say. It's, it's it breaks my heart to see him. Don't patronise the man. So it's he's the, he's not well. The frailty of the human body. I, it's funny how some people like. I think everyone's like that to a degree, is that if they see someone who, in their younger years, really personified youth and strength and vitality, yeah. and then they see that person elderly and, and or, or struck down with an illness... It Reminds you of your own mortality. Yeah, I think uh, that's why people don't no like more, to... No more kind of uh, personified by uh, Christopher Reeve. <laughs> yeah, that was One minute worst. you're Superman, next minute you're eating for a straw. I thought you were going to say wheelchair man. Yeah, no, I didn't. I didn't want to drop down that low, Michael. Well, that's that's good. No, I, I, but it is. I mean, it's, uh, it's oh, woe is us looking at people that are suffering from debilitating illnesses. But I think that's one of the reasons why people don't like confronting that sort of thing. 
Um, mm. it's, just, it's the same thing where you see people commenting on videos of someone who was like, um, was, has like aged or they think they've aged badly and there's like loads of comments like, what happened? And it's like, it was 40 years. It's like, 40 years since well, that like Goldie Horn, which is like slowly but surely turning into plastic. Oh, you're so mean. Is it raining where you are? No, it's sunny. Why can you hear rain? I heard for a little bit. Of... I wonder if right. Skype it, is turning just, your microphone up and down. It's just the uh, the tears that I'm shedding for all these <laughs> lost souls. Anyway, um, back yes. to Hammer. Back to Hammer. <laughs> the second Yet time again. we're gonna have a little bell we ring. Yeah, yeah. Um, back on topic. Yeah, but it's it. The funny thing with Hammer as well is that the they peaked over a very short space of time. If you look at the films that they made, once they once they got onto the success of making horror films after the first Frankenstein movie, and then they they followed that up with the horror of Dracula, and there was like a bunch of others after. They were cranking them though. Oh, um, a couple of year, easy, yeah. easy. I mean, um, one of my favourites actually is uh, the Brides of Dracula, which I think doesn't get a lot of love because it's. It's a sequel. It's the first sequel to Horror of Dracula, but it yeah. doesn't have. Uh, it doesn't have Christopher, Christopher Lee, in Lee it. but it does have uh, it does Peter Cushing. Yeah, and it's and it's get all. It's also got one of the the best dispatches of a vampire I've seen in a film with the windmill. I love that stuff, and I think that's like, the um. But that's that's got a bit more table jumping action in that film oh, as well, I, isn't it? I, that's that's a when you like, a lot of table hopping in that film. He's getting yeah. chased around the table, and is the is that the one where he makes the crucifix with mm. the candelabras again? No, that's the horror drag. That's the first one. That's the I greatest. I thought he did it again in mo- that one. Though. That's the most. Uh, that's the most sort of adventurous and uh, heroic thing I think I'd ever seen as a kid. Well, between, when, well, that film's loaded with it. Between them doing that and jumping and pulling down the curtains. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, it's, you know, you wouldn't have got away with doing that at home. But, um, <laughs> the, no, I'm I'm sure he does a reprise of it in that. Or maybe he just gets chased around the table and he gets twatted. I can't remember. There's there's a lot of that going on in the film. I really should know this because I actually watched it just a few weeks ago. The Brides of Dracula. Um, but the thing is, as well, they've got like Baron uh, Meinster in it. Who's yeah. like who the, the the idea I think that the Hammer tried to do after Horror of Dracula was right, okay, spoilers everyone, Dracula gets destroyed at the end of Dracula. <gasps> and um the idea was we're gonna try and make other films that that are kind of about the sort of spawn of Dracula in some way, like the plague that he's he's uh, uh put on the world and in the Brides of Dracula you've got this character, uh Baron Meinster, who has been chained up in his own castle by his mother because he's got involved in like the sort of occult and supposedly he's picked up this disease of vampirism um and then this this young beautiful woman is brought to the castle and she frees him thinking that he is uh, that, that it's his mother that's went mad and chained him up but it's sure, some, to make the, yeah but there's some really great stuff in that film uh, but I think they I don't know how it did the box office but I know that after that I think they were like yeah we really need to get Christopher Lee back but but Barn Meinster I think was, was pretty cool there's another one and funnily enough I've not seen this movie um, which is called Kiss of the Vampire which I think is another spin off um, and I've, I've no, never tracked it down it's quite rare I think or um are the Golden Vampires is that actually a Hammer production or is that a collaboration? Yeah, okay. yeah, um, it might be a collaboration, but that was mm. that was the the final one because they got to they got to the point with uh, after they did they did like Horror of Dracula and Dracula's Risen from the Grave and uh, Dracula Prince of Darkness, um, Taste the Blood of Dracula, Scars of Dracula, but when they got to I th- I think really like the fir- I like the first the first four. Uh, I still like I still watch the other ones, but after that they went to like Dracula AD nineteen seventy two. Oh, classic! After classic. Scars of Dracula, and that was like yeah, that That's was my ultimate Hammer horror guilty pleasure AD nineteen seventy two. Yeah, and kicking uh, kicking 
a uh, Dracula into a grave and shouting <laughs> the Holy Ghost at him and throwing a big thing of water at him while like a kind of funk soundtrack plays underneath is probably yeah. one of the most entertaining things. And then Christopher Lee does one of his trademark faces and yeah. then, oh, it's brilliant. Uh, yeah, but the thing is though, that's what I'm saying is that by the time you get to like the 1970s, right, so you've just got just over 10 years and, and Hammer was already losing its seal of quality by that point. You can point. see it's on its arse. It's fine. Yeah, but like, you, you just see how tonally, how wrong they get it. If you go back to like the first Dracula film, Horror of Dracula, and then you look at the later ones where they did uh, Dracula AD 1972, they did the Satanic Rites of Dracula, and then they did the Legend of the Seven Golden Vampires, which I must say to everyone, you have to watch that film to believe it. It's Peter Cushing as a Van Helsing type character in uh, the Far East with Kung Fu vampires. So uh, it's yeah, it's 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 batshit crazy, absolutely crazy. It's worth I, watching. Do you know for that. Christopher Lee though is funny though because obviously uh, anyone that kind of follows Hammer or the career of Christopher Lee knows that after he did it, he hated talking about it. Like, yeah. He didn't like to be typecast about it, but he certainly did a number of Fu Manchu movies yeah. subsequent to that. Yeah, but he also, I mean, the funny thing as well is when he was saying that is he also did, if I, if I remember rightly, he did maybe two other Dracula films outside yeah. of the Hammer canon. He did, like, two other ones. I think he did, did he do Dracula's Son or something like that? And he did, I, I'm trying to remember the, the name of them, but I know that there's two that he did. One was an, an Italian production. So, like, he still went and made those movies. Um, I'm just saying here, Dracula's risen from its grave from from the grave. I don't think that's Hammer. Yeah, that is Hammer. Is it? Yep. Fuck, there's so many of them towards it. Do you know there's, what? Actually, I have a much more of a familiar with the Frankenstein one. There's, than Dracula. there's there's eight, I think, of the the original uh, Dracula films. Yeah, they definitely were pumping them out. Oh, definitely. But the thing is, as well, though, we should say, as much as I absolutely love the Dracula movies, there's there's other good stuff that Hammer did, you know, you look at the first, uh, the Mummy movie, yeah. um, there's there's even, um, like I say, I mentioned The Abominable Snowman, which I really highly, highly recommend, uh, there's, there's even a zombie movie they did, Plague of the Zombies, um, which is interesting, and I quite liked... I always get the reptile and the gorgon mixed up. I think it was the reptile that I quite liked, um, which I think has Peter Cushing, uh, or is it the gorgons get Peter Cushing in it, and uh, Christopher Lee's got both of them in it. But I think I actually preferred the one that didn't have them in it, which was the reptile, and they were quite sort of similar movies. Is uh, the uh, the new Mummy film starring Tom Cruise is that a Hammer production? No, it's a Universal. The Universal are trying to... to <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, all right. That looks you. rotten, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. It's all right, you can see it. <laughs> um, the, well, they've got um, Russell Crowe. Hold Cole on, I'm reading... Uh, is, what, what is all this? But, sorry, I'm just reading the the byline for the new The Mummy, and Russell Crowe is in it as Dr. Henry that's, Jekyll. That's what I was just about to say. I, that's, is they're trying to do like a Marvel Universe, so he's, he's oh, going to be Dr. Dr. Jekyll. Oh, and fuck off! But I have to say though, right? Back to Hammer. Um, <laughs> one of my f- absolute favourites. In fact, two of my favourites: Quatermass in the Pit, which is a, a remake of a BBC serial, which is great. It's a sort of science fiction horror uh, film. But the the creme de la creme for me is like The Devil Rides Out. Is just oh, it's an mm. amazing movie. Have you seen The Devil Rides Out? I have indeed. Oh, I love that movie. See the first, the opening 15 minutes of that film with Christopher Lee? He could have played James Bond. <laughs> this, I, oh, I remember your argument for this. Yeah, because he's so, so charismatic in it. Yeah. Um, and the devil rides out for, for the, the devil rides out for those that Because it starts at the dinner party, doesn't it? And he's just kind of floating about as it's only about, Christopher Lee can do. I, it's about... Um, two friends who go to visit a, a, a younger friend at this sort of party yeah. and uh, they have they have sworn to a relative that they'll look after him and when they get there uh, 
uh, Christopher Lee's character, who's like uh, Duke de Richelieu, he 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 knows that he recognizes there's some sort of occultism going on, and he's sort of wandering through this party and like listening in to everything people are saying, and it's just it's fantastic. He's trying to expose them, and it ends up with this sort of Titanic uh, battle for the soul of this younger friend. Um, between classic if you'd like to know more of course you and alan did an episode on it that's true we did we did a we did a double features episode which, which I don't... uh we'll put in the description or if you're listening to this as a podcast it... you'll have to go and look for it <laughs> <laughs> um i absolutely loved this film it's always stayed with me one of the key scenes in the film is they draw this magic chalk circle and uh, they have to spend the night inside this circle, even though the forces of evil are going to send things to try and either get inside the circle or uh, tempt them to to leave it. And it's just it's it's phenomenal. I mean, I should say if if you've got a, if you prefer sort of uh, more sort of modern films, you're going to look at a lot of these uh, Hammer films and obviously they've aged. At the time, they weren't done with incredible budgets. So there are things that are hokey in them. And some people do feel that Hammer was at its best when it stayed within the sort of gothic era. You know, that's yeah. when it got it right. And then when it did other films outside of that, it didn't work so much. But, but you know, um, The Devil Rides Out is not in that era. And it works. It works amazingly well. In fact, I would go as far as to say that's one of my favourite Christopher Lee performances in that movie. He gets to play the good guy. And he's got loads of lines, unlike some of the Dracula movies. In fact, one of the Dracula movies, if I remember rightly, the lines were so bad that he said, I just don't want to say them. So yeah. that's why well, that's, he doesn't There speak. was a couple of ones he was silent, and yeah, he just yeah. completely wrote. And I think there were some other ones as well where he just went and did his own thing in terms of lines, and people were just like, oh, we should probably tell him not to. And you're just like, have you heard about the number of people he's actually killed? Just let him do what he wants. <laughs> it's funny, though, like you realise, I'm looking at this list of Hammer Horror films, and... I mean, they did, they did some amount. I mean, there, there are quite a few, actually, that I haven't seen. But if you go right down the line, once you get into the 70s, it's like they knew where their bread was buttered. It was, yeah. like, borderline exploitation. Uh, it's funny, though. Like, horror. what we're saying, though, It's too. all vampire stuff. It's, like, most of it's vampire stuff, apart from Dr. Jekyll and Sister Hyde. <sighs> Classic. But it's like we were saying, that, or I was saying earlier on... <clears throat> There's a lot of like misconception about which is what, and I think a lot of people get Amicus and uh, Hammer uh, kind of confused they a do. lot. They do, but I mean, Amic because they they used a lot, they used some of the same directors, they used a lot of the same actors, but Amicus were doing mainly anthology films, and yeah. they were also contemporary. Flying skulls around on wires. Yeah, they were contemporary, whereas Hammer was largely, like I say, set in the sort of gothic era, but. Tales from the Crypt was Amicus, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Tales yeah, yeah. from the, they they did uh, Tales from the Crypt, uh, Vault, uh, Vault of Horror, From Beyond, uh, The Grave. Uh, they did like a whole bunch. Doctor Te- Doctor Terror's uh, House of Horrors is probably my favourite. And yes, Howard the Duck. You're right. They did Fuck that. Off, they didn't. They did. They did Howard the Duck. Way that back was just then. that was actually meant to be a joke. No, no, no they did it. They absolutely Fuck did off. it. Uh, Peter, Peter Cushing was Harold the Duck. <laughs> ah, you've, you've tricked me back. Well done. And uh, yeah, so I would, I really would highly recommend people to go back and look at the Hammer Horror films. If, like me, you like atmosphere, you like interesting stories, you like performances, you like a, a horror which is more about kind of just just being a little bit creepy rather than being overly disturbing then uh hammer horror is definitely a great a great place to go and there are, there are so many films but i would definitely i'd recommend the the first uh the first few dracula movies the the frankenstein ones or the first two frankenstein ones the quatermass in the pit the devil rides out the abominable snowman um so there are a bunch of ones there that people can go and watch i'm not saying that you have to watch those ones do it. You, you can go and watch other ones if you want. Interestingly enough, as well, um, as we were saying, there's kind of like a resurgence as well, mm. uh, where we've had um, the the woman in black and what was the other one uh, they made recently? 
Hammer. They, I want to say the returned. Was... I'm getting confused with the ward, which is obviously. Uh, um... They did let me in. I've got a list here. I, the re, the resident was the one I was thinking of. They did right. let me in. The resident Wakewood, the woman in black, the quiet ones, and the woman in black, Angel of Death. So that's the last time they, they had a film in production then was uh, The Woman in Black, Angel of Death. Yeah, they sort of came back uh, in, the, after, like, in like 2010 you know, onwards. Well, I've not seen I've not seen the Let Me In remake. I love the original, but I hear the remake's quite good. I haven't... Uh, sorry, I have seen The Woman in Black. We went to see that in the cinema. For yeah. what it was, I love that. I'm I'm a huge fan of the Woman in Black story by Susan Hill. Like I, I, um, I love that story. I love the book. I've been to see the play. I've, there's a there's an original. Um, there was a film already previously in the 1980s was made for TV version, which is scarier, I think, because it's more like about dread than jump scares. But for what it was, I still thought it was. I thought it was. I thought it was decent. <clears throat> I would say that if you're if you're looking for something Hammer esque and you've seen all the Hammer films or you've seen all the ones that interest you, if you're looking for something more modern in the kind of vein of them, I would recommend you put a bit of time if you haven't into watching Penny Dreadful. Oh, that you've you've mentioned that to me several times, yep. but I've never seen it. It does uh, skirt across a lot of the characters as well. Um, you know, you've got characters like Dracula and I, I don't want to go too much into it because I don't want to reveal everyone that's in it but you've got like Dracula and you've got Frankenstein mm-hmm. um, it's mo- a monster and Frankenstein himself I'm not making that mistake but um, it's kind of it has a period setting and it kind of has that same kind of grittiness and tone uh, but a m- more contemporary version of it that Hammer did and it's got the best James Bond in it as well which so, one's the best James Bond? The Welsh one. <laughs> Big Tim. <laughs> Timothy Dalton, is that what they call him? The Big Welsh Tim. one. The Welsh yeah. one's the best one. You've got... Oh, they have I don't know, I've always got a bit of... I've always got a soft spot for Sean Connery, but I think Timothy Dalton's probably the best James Bond. He didn't have the best films, though. What, Timothy Dalton? Yeah, they're not bad. They're yeah, not the yeah, best. No, no, but they're the only fifteen certificate I get, ones as well. I, I get like you believe he's a killer. Yeah, you know. Whereas like uh, Roger Moore though is hilarious. <laughs> so I said to Cubby, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's. I mean, the fact that he got to the fucking age that he did, and it was like ninety eight percent of the film was shot with a stuntman. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful. Oh, that, uh, because when you look at like a view I'll to a put kill on and some all that, clothes and I'll buy you an ice cream. I know it's when he's like, I know he's like sixty five, wow. and he's like running around Eiffel Tower. Yeah, but that's the thing. He was like, he was like fifty, I think, when he first did the role. Yep. And uh, well, yeah, he was he was the the oldest James Bond anyway. Yeah. Which the the first one they did was uh, Live and Let Die. Um, which was actually to bank off of the success of black exploitation. Yeah. Um, which is something we were talking about potentially doing a podcast on black horror, seeing as Get Out's come out and has done very well and is by all accounts quite a good film. It it, it is. I, I enjoyed it and you enjoyed it as well. But I think um, yeah, I, I would be up for that. I have to say that my my knowledge of black exploitation is uh, fairly thin. Come in, Michael. To say, Come into my parlour. I know you. You are. You're in the business. You're in the know about that. That sort of thing. Well, it's either we do that or we do whether firing the director of the FBI is going to affect the next season of X Files. It's up to you which one you prefer to do. Let's do black exploitation. <laughs> Splendid. <laughs> um, is there anything else you want to say about Hammer Horror before we go? There's many things, Michael, but I don't know if we could contain them entirely in this. Uh, other than Big uh, Chris and Big Peter. Who would you say was your favourite Hammer alumni? Oh, um, I think it's fucking Alfred Pennyworth for me. Big Michael, Mike, Big Michael Cough. All right. <laughs> Joe, he was. I think he was in uh, one of the Amicus movies as well. Oh, he got around. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, the actor I'm thinking of, I'm trying to remember his name. 
it's coming to me it's coming Michael, to me through Michael York through, it's coming to me through the through the uh, the the internet I Andrew Andrew Keir I think he also if I'm right in saying was in the Dracula films as well he was in one of the Dracula films in the pit he was in the he was in the pit he was in Quatermass in the pit and he was in one of the Dracula movies as well he played the the monk that shoots the ice up underneath Dracula which is amazing um yeah so I'd probably go for him because he he left such an impression on me that I couldn't remember his name can I say in my defense that I have been uh very forgetful during this episode but I've I've been having a migraine for like a week Here we uh, go. Disclaimer. I, no no I'm just saying I'm just saying and First it affect, I've heard of it, it affect, aye, so it is, I've complained about it constantly to you That's right. um it's it, it affects my uh vocabulary and it also affects my memory so Motor functions uh, as you swipe everything yeah. off the desk yeah i also just would like to say that anytime i say anything offensive it's also because i have a, a migraine retrospectively all right <laughs> um yeah so i i have a i have a so, real soft spot for the hammer films because it, it it was one of those things that my dad introduced me to and i think part of my love for it like comes from that you know i mean i would sit with my dad and we'd sit and watch these movies but also just having the the sort of heroes because a lot of the a lot of the hammer films are straight up good against evil yeah which you don't really get now very often people always want to put like a human face on the villain which i think is good on the whole but it, i sometimes miss just having a sort of good old titanic struggle between an evil character and a, and a truly good character and i would also say as well uh that the the thing about hammer horror is hammer horror is a a good example of how to do a soft reboot and i say that in the sense that it came not that far off the kind of universal yeah horrors, but it did them in a way that was interesting and different enough um that you know it, they, they were worth watching and 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 they're their own films in their own right whereas i think a lot of remakes these days are either like totally forgettable or don't i mean like the robocop remake for example i mean i would never ever watch that over the the remake uh, no. over the original sorry <laughs> but, but the the, I would watch the Hammer horror films and I would watch the Universal ones separately for their own merits. Yeah, they they, they are really the, it's just the idea that that Hammer horror went with. Um, yeah. I think I'm right in saying that it was more like of a sort of distribution deal with Universal that they had, so that in America Universal would distribute the Hammer kind of versions of their films. Sure. But um, but yeah, like uh, they they really they really get gothic horror right and there's a handful of movies that just hit the nail on the head hit it up the wall yeah no well there's there's also hit it Much up the wall did you say I like to hmm? piss it up the wall yeah I did <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean I just mean that there's there's a handful <laughs> of movies still within Hammer Horror that piss it up the wall that oh. they're shite oh there's there's more than a handful of Hammer films yeah. that aren't great I mean that's that's the thing like they they really but there are a handful of really great movies and there's there's a bunch of other solid ones and the thing is as well these are the types of films that i can sit down and watch i suppose there's a nostalgia element to it but i can watch these films even and recognize their faults and recognize as well with them them too like you have to give them credit as well for like some well credit in certain ways and you know you can blame them in other ways for being an evolution of horror because i don't think we would have a horror as it is today without the hammer films oh absolutely not i mean they, they certainly pushed the boundaries uh in terms of gore acceptability and, se- and, taste. and, and, and sex really because that's i mean that's really the two things that you think of when you think of that the hammer film catalog is blood and uh busty women basically Fangs that's and tits, basically yeah they 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 did a lot of that so um, that could be your uh that could be your special account of hammer blood and boobs <laughs> the hammer horror it, story it was really 
I think it must have been really shocking at the time, though. You watch these things now, oh, yeah. and you see, you think they're incredibly tame. But at the time, it must have been. I think it was seen to be in very poor taste at the time. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, but I mean, do you want to say that to Christopher Lee's face? No, no, absolutely not. But I just that whole that whole period where you had like you had Vincent Price kicking around, you had Peter Cushing, you had Christopher Lee. It's just ah, oh, perhaps the world's her. most enjoyable over actor, Vincent Price. Oh, yeah, he's always hamming it up, but he's so good. He's yeah. so good. There are some people who can do that. Very few who can do it, um, can be campy and can also be sincere. I just watched, actually, re-watched, actually, Pit and the Pendulum, which I hadn't seen for yeah, years, yeah. which could potentially come back in a kind of uh, a horror of Netflix type thing. Perhaps. I'm not making any promises. Um, <laughs> but um, I, I forgot... I hadn't seen that for years, and I forgot. Like, I mean, he's just turning it up to nineteen in that <laughs> film. He's just like you know, fainting left, right, and centre, and oh, yeah, right. yeah. Good old he, Vincent Price. He's phenomenal. He's phenomenal. I love uh, Tales Twice Told, which is like an anthology film, and he's in each of the each of the three short films that are in it, and it's just it's glorious. It's absolutely glorious. It's also got Basil Rathbone in it, which is always worth a watch. Um, so yeah, I would I would recommend this book, uh, the Hammer Story, uh, the authorized history of Hammer films by Marcus Hearn and Alan Barnes. It's basically a big uh, coffee book, and it's got loads of interesting stuff in it, and loads of pictures, uh, backstage stuff, and actual facts. Stuff. Actual yeah, facts. Yeah, as opposed to what we did, because we just threw this podcast together, baby. Um, so anyway, anything else you'd like to add? Uh, did you know that it was the same actor that played uh, Box the Robot and Robot and uh, Logan's Run that did the narration for Babe? No, I did not. I found that out the other day. Tickled me. That's a phenomenal piece of film trivia, Cam. File Thank that you. one away. It's sure to come up in a pub <laughs> quiz any moment now. Uh, yeah, thanks for that. That's that's grand. And uh, on topic, I might add. Very yeah. well, why topic. Don't, I think maybe we should solicit some uh, some suggestions this time. I mean, I know we talked about probably talking about Get Out next time, but why don't some people leave some comments down below if indeed you're able to do so. I don't know by what method you're listening to this. Ideally cassette tape. Um, <laughs> but leave some comments down below if you'd like to make some suggestions about yeah. something we could cover with the massive amount of alternate facts that we normally do. <laughs> You can reach us either by commenting in the YouTube the YouTube uh, comment section. You can comment on the, our Libsyn page, but you can also get Sacrifice us... Sacrifice a virgin. You, you can do that as well, and you can also get us on gaslytales at gmail.com. So I think that's all for now. We'll be back with... Uh, some more podcasts soon we've got a bunch of horror fiction stuff coming up films etc and we'll talk about that in some upcoming videos so yeah that's that's good Cal. peace in the middle east i have nothing else to say (laughs) did you just walk out your room when you said that yeah that's that's my manifesto it's just the one sentence beautiful beautiful all right bye for now everyone bye children we hope you enjoyed tonight's podcast If you would like to support the free content the Ghastly Tales team produces, please subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ghastlytales. And if you have any requests for horror topics you would like us to discuss, you can leave a comment below if you're watching this on YouTube or send us a message on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash ghastlytalespresents. Alternatively, you can email us at ghastlytales at gmail.com Thanks for listening and stay tuned for more original horror stories, narrations, films and podcasts. Unpleasant dreams.